Hello and welcome to Bilty's Business Book Review. A nice alliteration there. Um, as many of you are furloughed and many others who aren't furloughed have got a bit of time on their hands through social isolation, I thought I'd run through the books that have made a massive difference to the way that we run uh, Webmart. Um, I read them on what's called my DIY MBA. So I have half a day a week, every week of the year, where I go away, read books, look at videos, etc, etc. So I thought I'd share them with you. Um, and hopefully you'll find them useful. And there'll be a link at the bottom uh, for Amazon, uh, which will donate to charity using their Smile function, I don't know if you've uh, seen that, but and also I'll try and find a local non-Amazon bookseller to do to uh, help um, a small business at times like this that's open. So the first book that I'm going to uh, read, what I tend to do is I scribble in the front lots of notes of pages and I turn every page over. I know it's seen as sacrilege by many people but I basically turn over and underline and all of this kind of stuff uh, things so I can quickly reread them after I've um, read them the first time and then you, you can keep refreshing. I also, back in the day, I haven't done so much recently, I, I get all of the underlines uh, typed up um, and so if you want a copy of my uh, salient points that I've taken from this, I'll try and dig out this Word document from 2003. So this is nearly 20 year old this book. It's called Good to Great by Jim Collins. It's a Random House uh, book and Random House do some really good uh, business books and the, uh, there's a huge amount I got out of this and everybody at the senior management team level at uh, this, this time read this book and bought one for every, uh, every person and read it and what we got out of it as a business really helped form a uh, number of the things that we did in terms of recruitment, in terms of um, getting the right, uh, there's certain terms come out of it. So the concept of servant leadership, you may or may not have come across before. So saying that actually they call it a level five leader. And it's somebody who does in the top level of an organization who does the, uh, makes the decisions not for their own personal gain, but for their business and really focus on what's the business uh, benefit for delivering anything for the greater good, effectively, rather than individual gain. And what you tend to find is people who are full of um, self-aggrandizement. Um, they tend not to have sustainable business. They may go like this, and there are certain examples in there that have, have been through this that they cite as good ones, like General Electric, who at the time Jack Welch was, uh, you know, the, the doyen of uh, leadership, uh, and that hasn't stood the test of times. But there are others that really have and if you want to understand how to develop a business I wrote down some notes from my notes um, so I'll try and keep this under five minutes so if you wanted to build a sustainable business going forward you recruit on values so you could call it attitude um, but it's you so if you've got the right attitude and the right heart and head on the people then all of a sudden you can create a world-class business with the right people getting the best people on there and this, the level five leaders has got personal humility so they're not look at me i'm the you know whatever they've put the company first and therefore it, it aligns throughout the organization um, but they are fearless they will make the right decisions for the greater good no matter how hard it is you can't turn away from it you can't turn a blind eye and you know those of you in leadership know you know, as a CEO, you've got to have two things. One is a telescope, so you can see the far strategy and understand the opportunities, never more so than now, with what we're going through um, in the UK and, and far beyond, of course. Um, but also, you've got to have the microscope. So you look at the little things. You don't ignore the little things, because quite quickly they turn into big things if you're not careful. Um, interesting that he says the role of luck. Everybody who builds a world-class business said, well, we were lucky. But of course, you're only lucky because you're out there. You build a network, you build people. You know, as the old adage in sales, you, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, and this is where you need to build up networks and actually pay forward, help as many people as you possibly can. Um, and with no expectation of anything back, and luck comes to you. People will practically ring you up and try and 
pay back some favour, you, you probably weren't even aware you'd done, but at the time they did. So this is where paying forward, helping as many people as you can by mentoring, by speaking, by sharing, by you know, internships, by all of those kind of things. Really, really powerful. Um, and they, they, they talk an analogy of a bus. And you get the idea of a business, I call it kind of as a bag of people, and they call it a kind of the bus, that you've, you want to get the right people on the bus, and crucially, the wrong people off the bus. If you get that, then you have a fantastic opportunity because you've got the right people who, with the right core values who are there to help each other and work together. And if you, if you achieve that, then you can actually go anyway. So you decide who's on the bus and who should be off the bus based on core values and obviously aptitude and ability. And then you decide what to do. So you don't say, right, we're going this. Uh, you you know, you co-create alongside the really best people you can uh, engage with your organization. And there's um, a saying that's always stuck with me. It says you sp in management, you spend 80% of your time managing the 20% of people you shouldn't have fucking taken on in the first place. And now, when you, if you think of that, if you're a manager and you've got anybody under you, you'll be thinking of the people you think, actually, I'll spend a disproportionate amount of bastard time dealing with these people. Um, and uh, and that, that, those names will be flashing across your head now. And if you can get the right people, it's just fabulous. It, it really is. And it, you're pushing water downhill. And what we extracted from this is that it, we want to maximise the intellectual return of people. Uh, and this is one of the mantras of web Marxist Marxist capitalist uh, ethos. Maximise the intellectual by getting the right people up, um, on the bus and then giving them a great challenge. And they ra raise their game to uh, try and achieve it for not just the individual game, but, but for everybody. Um, and then you don't have to motivate, you don't have to manage really the right people. You don't have to manage. They, they do the right thing. You have to direct and align purpose and all that, and that's where strategy comes in. But actually, the right people, you know, the best people in your team, you will think, actually, oh, God, I don't have to manage them. They get on with it. They do the right thing. And so this is one of the critical things. Of course, if you do that then, you enjoy it. You're enjoying your role. You're not having to sit there and do uh, an awful lot of kind of things that, you, you know, nobody likes micromanaging people. It's awful. Um, but you feel you have to if you've got the wrong the wrong people. So you maximise the emotional return as well. So intellectual, emotional, and as an outcome of that, you maximise the financial. And we, by creating that capitalist surplus profit uh, or capitalist gross profit, and then we worked out what we need as a business. We ended up with a surplus profit, and that came out of that. And we have the sexy scheme, which is a redistribution of the profits within the business, and that's the Webmart. Uh, mantra, uh, which you, 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 you're aiming to be successful in the long term. As a consequence of that, we are here in April 2020 in the middle of a global pandemic and uh, we, I know, I can commit to my people on the Maslowian hierarchy of needs, I can give them security that we are um, going to be here in the long term. Um, and that's really important because there's a lot of stress and a lot of anguish out there. Yes, of course, we've got to furlough people because we've got nothing to do. Um, but it's really important um, to uh, give that commitment that we are there and we have topped it up to their base salary of what, the, what they used to, to uh, they're used to. And obviously they need to uh, look after their families. Um, but then finance kind of work, it, it works its own way out, out after a, uh, a period of time. So we've retained profit in the good times so that this, which is a very difficult time, we'll be losing six figure sums a month, uh, even with furlough. Um, we can afford it. We, we can, you know, we're going into our reserves, but we've got reserves to see us through it. The other thing that came out of this is to have a rigorous culture, not a ruthless one. So you have a constant approach to things. It, you have one version of the truth. There are different ones. I know what you're asking. Really, really important. And give the give give the biggest opportunities to the best people, not the biggest problems. Certainly, when I was growing up as a, a sprog, I was um, on, really lucky to be on a, a leadership training course from straight out of university, and um, I really enjoyed it. But then the managers that I was reporting to give me all the shit to deal with. And you do it because it's good experience and what have you, but actually you don't build great companies giving the most able people the shittest jobs. So you've got to give them the biggest opportunities 
and there will be a high degree of failure in some of them because typically with you know new stuff there's a higher uh, risk but you'll learn from each one and then you can build and build and build going forward to give the best people the biggest opportunities not the biggest problems to solve um, and the other thing that came out of it very strongly for me is understanding empathy uh, and how powerful a force empathy is and you know as the old saying goes in sales you've got two of these and one of those and use them in that proportion so actively listening to people and what they're saying and, what, and understanding why they're saying it then then it helps an awful way through so it is a moment in time uh, that i think rereading uh, good to great would be well worth it if you get a chance i've realized i've fuck the timing completely but hopefully you'll have uh, found that useful and uh, use the links be, uh, below and I'll do another uh, Bilties business book briefing tomorrow have a nice day hope you're getting sunshine like this this is the Yorkshire Sculpture Park which I'm very lucky en uh, enough to uh, <coughs> to live by so it gives me an opportunity to get outside and if you after this is all over please come and have a Look, I will give you a cup of tea if you want it. It's the most divine site in Barnsley, Yorkshire. You wouldn't expect this to be uh, um, in n near uh, places like Barnsley, Rotherham, Leeds, Doncaster, you know, but this is there's a lot of nice places to visit and we'll need visitors when this is all over. Anyway, take care. See you tomorrow. Bye.